Okay, it's usual to start with thanking the speakers for <laughs> thanking the organizers for invite, inviting me to speak. I think in this case I, I should thank Lev for, for pushing me to speak when, uh, when I uh, have really very sim only a very simple-minded talk to give. Um, and I also, on the same occasion, would like to thank um, uh, Avshalom Malitzer for plugging our book at the end of his talk, which is okay. Um, now, what I have to say is only about the Aaron of Kasher paper, and I'm going to say nothing beyond this, the paper, and everything I have to say is in the paper, it's implicit in the paper. The most I can say is that perhaps I've made something more, something explicit that wasn't uh, it was only implicit in the paper, and this comes out of a conversation with Yakir, which, uh, in which I tried to understand something. So, so in the paper of uh, Harana and Kasher, um, there's reference to a kind of duality between um, the the two of the, uh, the Aaron of Bohm and the Aaron of Kasher effect, and um, it's not really defined mathematically what this duality is. In addition, I found it strange that the, the requirement for the aronov kasher effect that the line of charge be straight is somehow added on or tacked on in the paper. It's not organically, it doesn't seem to be organically related to the duality. And of course, there's the problem that the, the um, neutron in the aronov kasher effect is feel, going through a, a uh, uh, electromagnetic magnetic, magnetic field, whereas the electron in the aronov bohm effect is not. So I want to show that these things can be understood better. And this is um, very much similar to uh, Avshalom's thought, so I won't, I'll go through it very quickly, which I intended to do anyway. We'll start with uh, in two dimensions. So here we have a, a plane looked at from edge on, and we have an electron, and we have, I'll just call it an electron and a neutron, although well, it could be any charged particle and particle, neutral particle in a magnetic moment. And then we can put the electron in a superposition of two states, and then we can also do that with the flexon or the neutron. And when we do that, uh, we, because somehow or other we're going to get the electron on either side of this uh, neutron, there's going to be an iron of bomb relative phase. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Sandra. This, this is a yeah, spinless electron. <coughs> Um, now this is very simple-minded. I'm going to continue in the sort of vein. We could do one kind of experiment in which Alice measures the relative phase of the electron, whereas Bob measures the position, just as Avshalom said. So Bob finds the, uh, the neutron here, and then there's a AB effect, and then where he finds it here, and then there's no effect. Um, and uh, we could also do a different kind of experiment, and this is simply a rewriting of the exact same state. I haven't changed the state at all. I've simply rewritten it, but then it makes a, a different experiment natural, namely Bob measures the relative phase and Alice measures the uh, position and then we get that when, um, when um, Bob, when Alice finds the uh, electron between the, the neutron states, um, then Bob sees a uh, a relative phase and topological phase, and otherwise he doesn't. Now this is all very. Um, uh, this is all very simple-minded, and uh, yet profound. The only reason we think it's simple-minded is because of what uh, uh, Yakir Aharonov and David Bum did 50 years ago. Otherwise, we would. Uh, see <coughs> Um, only see that it was profound. But um, are these two effects dual? We have two different experiments which have two different results. Um, but my feeling is from their paper that they, this is not what they meant by duality. Correct me if I'm wrong up here, but I felt, I feel that what they talked about in this, as duality is two different physical systems which have some relationship rather than the same physical system which you can measure in two different ways. So let's try to go from two dimensions to three dimensions and there are two inequivalent ways to do that. We can turn the uh, neutron into a uh, flux line or we can turn the uh, uh, electron into a line of charge and in either case what we're going to have to do the basic unit that we work with is a, 
electron and a neutron in um, three dimensions and the relationship between them, which is given by this formula, which, by the way, uh, the Aharonov Kasher paper proves three times and then brings an additional proof which is not totally independent of the first three proofs and in the footnotes, in the references, refers to a fifth proof. So this is pretty well uh, covered by the paper. I'll just mention that you can derive it if you simply take uh, the uh, a kinetic, term, kinetic term for the electron, uh, the vector potential resulting from a single uh, element of uh, flux. This is straight out of Jackson's classical mechanics. And now we add a uh, kinetic term for the flux particle for the neutron and make the, uh, the velocities relative. And this has some nice, this equation, which is exactly, this Lagrangian, which is exactly the one derived uh, three or four or five times in the Aron of Kasher paper, uh, has some nice properties. It's gauge invariant, as it, of course, uh, has to be. It's translation invariant because we've made all the positions and velocities relative. And it's reflective, namely, um, if we s switch the positions and the um, velocities and the masses, um, it's, we get exactly the same Lagrangian, which means that the dy dynamics and the forces will all be the same whether we have the, the electron here and the neutron there or vice versa. And from here we can go on to talk about, uh, about duality. So here is a, uh, a line of flux and electron. This is exactly the Aronoff bohm effect. And now I will show you that this physical system does not have a dual, uh, a dual effect. This is called proof by uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if I'll just show it again. Sorry. You can't do uh, you can't do uh, duality here because all of those uh, neutrons have their spin pointing their magnetic mo mo moments uh, pointing in different directions, and when we try to to uh, <coughs> transfer them to this one poor electron, the electron will get terribly confused, and that's the result. So we can't have duality in this case. Certainly not duality in the sense that it was. Uh, prepared for us um, based on this Lagrangian which links a, an electron with a neutron. What we can do, however, is have a uh, duality between a straight line of uh, neutrons and an electron because in that case everything is well defined and the force between the two uh, entities uh, will not change under the dual transformation. And that's really uh, as I said, very simple-minded, but it explains right away why the uh, line of uh, f charge has to be um, straight and explains it as a, uh, as a consequence of the uh, duality. And I would say it also really explains why in one effect we have an electric field, in the other effect we, there's no magnetic field, but in fact there is an electric field. There's an electric field of the passing electron. So, um, so everything is really quite uh, natural. There's an electric field in both cases. And, and once we treat these two entities as dual and each one capable of moving, then it's, there's no particular reason why we should regard the, uh, the field of the line of uh, charge as being more disturbing or more unusual than the field from the electron itself. So that's really all I have to say except to to thank Yakir, and this is one of Yakir's best uh, modes uh, of explaining uh, things, and uh, that's uh, a chance to thank him and to wish him many more years of explanations and productivity. With the what, si single neutron. If the wire would be bent, there is some effect, but maybe it's not exactly calculable. It's not topological. 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 It
course, the, what happens if the spin of the neutron, while it goes around, is made to change? Still, I don't think that they, that so you cannot do it in an experiment, but in principle. I have a question. I get a copy of this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's on the web, but uh, sure. It's actually uh, Lev's uh, picture. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay.